Good morning, this is Mrs. Yule. Moving on with the Future Cities Project, I'm going to be talking about shapes of distributions today. And uh, if you hear my dog snoring in the background, it's okay. She just likes to be in here while I'm recording these. Hopefully the videos are helping you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my smart board slides with you. So once again, like I said, we're talking about future city shapes of distributions. And the central question here is, how can you use a histogram to characterize the basic shape of a distribution? I talked about how to make a histogram in an earlier video and, and hopefully you remembered how to do that. And we're gonna revisit that today too. So once again, pause the video if I get ahead of you, copy down what you need and then go ahead and go on. So when I talk about histograms, all of these are histograms but they have different shapes. Remember that the intervals go on the x-axis, frequency goes on the left axis or the y-axis. So when I have this one, this is the one we're most used to seeing. It looks like a smooth mountain. We call this symmetric because when I fold it in half on the middle, both halves are going to match. That usually doesn't happen when I look at data. Usually I have something that is skewed and skewed just means it's pulled one way or another. So it is skewed to the left if I took the whole thing and stretched it out to the left. So the part we call the tail is going towards the left. This one is skewed the other way. The tallest part is right here. This time I pulled the data out to the right. So we say it is skewed right. When you look at this for the skewed left, most of the data are on the right hand side. And if I look at the skewed left, then most of the data, nope, sorry, skewed right, most of the data is on the left. So skewed right, data is on the le left. Skewed left, most of the data is on the right. Symmetric means half is on one side, half is on the other. So make sure you understand what those shapes mean because we're gonna be using those. So for this very first example, I'm going between my two computers here because it's easiest in a way. So we are going to describe the shape of distribution. The frequency table shows the number of raffle tickets sold by students in your grade. Display the data in a histogram, describe the shape of distribution. So remember the intervals go on the x-axis, axis, frequency goes on the right, you need to put scale on each one of those. So the intervals are gonna be one to eight, nine through 16. This tells a frequency. So pause the video for a second. I want you to make this histogram and then I want you to describe the shape. So it's either gonna be symmetric, skewed right or skewed left. So once you've got it done, go ahead and move on. Here's the answer to this. Here's the number of tickets sold. And if I look at this, this is pretty even. I could pretty much fold it in half and it would match. So I would say that this one is symmetric. Both the data is pretty evenly distributed on this one. Okay, next question. The frequency table shows the number of pounds of aluminum cans collected by classes for a fundraiser. Display the data in a histogram. Again, describe the shape of distribution. So here are my intervals. X-axis frequency goes on the Y-axis. Go ahead and pause the video, make this, and then tell me what shape it is. And when you do this, this one is not symmetric. The tail of the graph here is going to the left. Most of the data is on the right. So this one is skewed to the left. My graph has been pulled over to the left. How'd you do on that one? Did you get it? Okay, so the shape of the distribution tells me how I should measure the center of this. So when I look at this one, I'm going to use the mean. If I'm talking about a symmetric data distribution on a histogram, or it would be a box and whiskers plot also. So any kind of distribution, if it's symmetric, you are going to use the mean to describe the center or the typical data value. And you're gonna use standard deviation with Ms., which Ms. Lofts has gone over in another video. 
if the distribution shape is skewed, that is it's pulled either left or right, you are going to use the mean and the median. Here we're going to use the median. The mean is not what we want to use, sorry. We're going to use the median. And for both of them, we're going to use the median. Here is the mean, but again, the median is a better measure for this. So you will also use the five number summary to describe variation. Five number summary, I'm not sure we've done that yet, so let me go over it. The five number summary, the TI calculator finds really easily. Again, this would be a Desmos U2 project. Go on and see how you can do statistic, statistics in Desmos and how you would get the five number summary. For those of you who have the TI calculator, if you put your data in L1 and then go to calculate, there is, I think number one says five number summary and it will tell you this. So it's gonna tell me what the median, the median, the minimum is, what Q1 is, Q2 are the median, Q3 and the max. Just to remind you of what the Qs are, I have that on the next slide here. So the Qs, I put all of the numbers in order and I find the median, that is Q2. We also call them quartiles. The Q comes from quartile. So that gives me the second quartile. Now, I just look at the first half of the data. So the median has divided the numbers in half. I'm just gonna look at the first half now. I'm gonna divide those in half. So again, I'm finding the median or the middle number of the lower half. That will give me Q1. And then if I look at the data that's on the right-hand side or the upper half, I find the middle of that, and that will give me Q3. So the five number summary, the smallest one, then I need Q1, Q2, and Q3. We also talked about measures of variation. So the measure of variation is a measure that describes the spread or distribution of a data set. We're going to use the measures for this are going to be the range. The range is just the difference between the highest number or the maximum and the minimum number. And the other measure of variation we're going to use is standard deviation. And you had a separate video on how to find that. So choosing the appropriate measure, police officer measures the speed in miles per hour of 30 motorists. The results are shown in a table. It says at left, but it's actually down below. For part A, describe the data or display the data in a histogram using six intervals. My first interval is 31 to 35. So you've got to figure out you want even numbers in your intervals. This gives you the clue as to what they should be. What measures of center and variation best represent the data? So that means you need to decide what shape it is. And the speed limit is 45 miles per hour. How would you interpret those results? So go ahead and pause the video, work out this problem, and then turn it back on and see if you were right. So here's the solution for this. My intervals are 31, 35, 36, 40, 41, 45, et cetera. Here is the table are the histogram for this. Notice if I fold this in half, the halves are not going to meet, so it is not symmetric. Most of the data is over here on the right, and the tail is going off to the left, so it is skewed left. When I have a skewed data set, I'm going to describe the center by the median, so the median is my measure of center, and the five number summary will tell me about the variation. So I can see that most of the speeds are more than 45 miles an hour. So most of the motorists were indeed speeding. How'd you do on that one? Okay, last one, I believe. You record the number of email attachments sent to 30 employees of a company in one week. Your results are shown in the table. Display the data in a histogram using six intervals, so one to 20, figure out what the other five are. What measures of center and variation both represent the data, explain. So pause this, go ahead and make your histogram, 
talk about the shape of the histogram, tell me what measure of center and what measure of variation you would use for this. Okay, here it's broken down into the intervals. Here's the count. This is the email attachments to it. So this is what the um, histogram should have looked like. If I move my other answer over so you can see it, because the data on the right of the distribution mirror the data on the left, almost, it's not perfect, but it's really close. This is symmetric. When it's symmetric, I'm gonna use the mean and I'm gonna use standard deviation. So mean describes the center, standard deviation is what I would use for variation. Oh, I didn't do this. I, there's one more I forgot that I had. I actually like this one too. So um, emojicons are graphic symbols that represent facial expression. They're used to convey a person's mood in a text message. The double histogram shows the distribution of emojicon messages sent by a group of female students. So here's the female students up above and male students down below. This is in one week. Compare the distribution using their shapes and appropriate measure of center and variation. So you're gonna tell me, are they skewed left, skewed right? Are they symmetric? Am I gonna use the median or the mean? And am I using the five number summary or am I gonna use standard deviation? So this is called a double histogram. We haven't talked about this before, although I think some of the worksheets have you make them. We are, um, you put them right on top of each other to represent two different groups that are studying the similar data. So here, this double histogram shows females versus males about text messaging in one week. So go ahead and tell me, is female symmetric, skewed, same thing with the male, pause the tape, and then go on to the next slide when you're ready. So the answer to this is the females are symmetric, so I would use the mean and the standard deviation. The males are skewed right, so I'm gonna use the median and the five number summary. Now I think I might be done. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need to do these. If you need more practice or you need to talk to us about it, you can go ahead and do this. Um, hopefully this is helpful. You can watch it again. Give us feedback on how it's going for you. We'd love to hear from you. We are going to be changing the Google Classroom times if you haven't gotten that already or the class meetings. We have some meetings next week at 10, so we need to change that, but I'll let you know as we go along. We'll just post it to Classroom. And I have gotten a lot of questions so far from students, a lot of comments. So keep them coming, watch the videos, try the work, and let us know how it goes. Thank you, everybody. Bye.